recording a lot of people at Christian Center? It's a, a monsoon day today, the rain is falling down. So, when, uh, uh, lots of us have been banging our houses and rain has been coming into, coming into the church as well. So, for the the rain is falling down. Uh, so, we Several of us have been soaked this morning, not in the shower, but by the showers. But rain is always a sign of God's blessing on the earth. And so we're rejoicing that the rain comes and God blesses the earth. Now today we've got our final session on the importance of breathing. And because it's the final session on breathing, don't think that you need to stop breathing. Right, we need to carry on breathing. And spiritual breathing is an in-breathing of the Holy Spirit. I think this has been such an exciting journey to learn to discover how we can have a lifestyle full of the Holy Spirit. There never has to be a time when you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you observe the right protocols and your desire is to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit, He will abide in you all the time. And what we discovered is that breathing in the Holy Spirit is as easy as breathing in air. And when you take a, a deep breath, you feel how the oxygen refreshes your body. And in the same way, when you breathe in the Holy Spirit, you feel the manifest presence of Jesus. So our desire to breathe in the presence of Jesus, to breathe in the Holy Spirit, becomes an essential part of our existence. We've been looking at some key verses over the past few weeks. Remember Acts 17, 28? For in Him we live and move and have our being. Now this enables us all the time and in all circumstances to be able to respond to the leading of God. And in every circumstance, I can then uh, do the right thing. And when I do the right thing, I start to change. I start to be transformed by the power of God. And what happens in me then gets passed on to my family. To my friends. And to my community. Not only as individuals, but together as the ecclesia. Right? That's why when I'm full of the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus is in me, and I stand it together with you in agreement. It becomes so powerful to change things. Now since the start of July, we've been going as an ecclesia in groups to a high point of Phuket. Yes. 
And our first objective is to ascend to the high place, to hear God. God seeking God's name. What God, what do you want to tell us about our role in bringing your presence to Phuket? And you know, when you go from a low place and you go to a high place, your perspective is changed. And we've been declaring in the word that we receive. And declaring over the island of Phuket. And everyone that's done up has experienced the revelation that God gives when we seek Him. No one has been disappointed. And we've been agreeing together. God is good. And His mercy endures forever. And through us, we pass that mercy on to those around us. We've been discovering that when we agree together, God can do amazing things. Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Truly, I tell you, wherever you buy on earth will be bound in heaven. And wherever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So what's been happening when we go on the mountain to pray? We move from knowledge and understanding through to wisdom. What do I mean by that? Well, knowledge is the acquisition of truth. Right? When I read the word of God or God speaks to me in his word, I receive truth. I get to know what God means. I get to know what's important to God. And I, I can receive that. That becomes a knowledge. That I possess. But then, God also, by the power of His Holy Spirit, brings me understanding of that word. Right? That's what we call revelation. Right? So many times I can read the word of God and I don't understand it. But when I'm in the spirit, that understanding gets revealed to me. And so that's what we've been doing is we go to seek God for a word. He speaks to us and we receive the word, but we also receive understanding. I acquire a knowledge of the truth. And I allow it to fashion the way that I think. Right? 
You see, uh, I can know something, but it might, it might not change the way I think. I need God's word, not, not just to know it, but I need it to change the way I think about the word. I need to change the way I think about me. You see, I started to discover that God loved me. But now I understand that He loves me and He's made me His child. I am a child of God. I have an inheritance. <coughs> and that changes the way I think about myself. But there's something beyond that. Not only do I need that, but I need wisdom. So what is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of truth. So I start to live out what I am now convinced of. Right? It changes my lifestyle. When God speaks to me, and I receive his word. Right? I can then start to live that word out. You see, God is very clear on this. If you know God's word and you don't obey it, the Bible defines that as being foolish. But if we know God's word and we obey it, the, the word of God tells us we're wise. Every time we go on the mountain top and we declare the word of God in agreement, we are being wise. We are being obedient to what God has revealed to us. And when we are in agreement, God, our Heavenly Father, will answer our prayers. Right? Anything we ask for will be done for us by our Father in Heaven. That's Matthew 18, 19 to 20. So in Matthew, again, in Matthew 7, verses 7 to 8, he says this. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. But look at this. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Are you having a problem receiving what you ask for? Are you having a problem seeking what you're looking for? Are you having problems opening doors? I'm talking about spiritual doors, I don't mean the doors of the car, doors of the car or the doors of the house. Right? What do you need to open a door? A key. Right? You need a key. Simple. It's not difficult. So what's the key to opening doors? The key is this, to recognize that you need to ask God what you 
ุดีสะอาดสกรีนโฟมแต่ก็คือมันต้องไปหาเรื่องราวสิ่งที่เราควรขอจากพระองค์คืออะไร When he says anything you ask the Father will give you, he's talking about anything according to His plan and purpose for you. Right? I ask God for a sign. Can you give me a sign? He said, "This is what you know. This is what I want for you. This is how this is sign." And you know what? I'm very happy with my design. Right? I have no design now for a Mercedes. I'm happy with my design. Praise God. Okay, so God knows what's best. Your desire might be might be good to you, but it might not be good to God. We go back to Jeremiah 29, 11. Who knows the plans for the best for you? For I know the plans I have for you, says the declares the Lord. That's the most important thing for us to grasp. So our first objective when we climb the mountain, when we go to the high place, when we ascend the hill of the Lord. What is it? It's to say, God, reveal your plan to me. I want to know your plan. I want to live out your plan. And when you do that, anything you ask, Father in heaven will give to us. Praise God. If you combine Matthew 7 with Matthew 18, you can see how powerful it is for the atmosphere to go to a high place. And praise God, even though it's raining today, the high place is falling. Yeah. I'm praying you'll use up all the blessing from heaven today so that when Mother and I go, we have to really pray out from a dry place. We need to hear from God. We need to declare truth over the land. I don't want to declare my good ideas over the land. I want to declare God's truth over the land. Right? It's the spiritual equivalent. When we go to the high place, the, the spiritual equivalent of God taking our petition to a high court. And when we do that, heaven starts to legislate over earth. And when heaven speaks to earth, the impossible becomes possible. I want to do, I want to do a bit of that action, right? I want heaven speaking to earth through you. Right, because if Brian speaks to the earth, the earth will say, who are you? But when heaven speaks to earth, the earth may say, who are you? The answer comes back, the maker of heaven. Right? 
At the start of the year, we declared that 2021 was going to be the year of new beginnings. And we actually went to the high place, and that's where we received that word. And it seems crazy to say uh, that this is the year of new beginnings when the world is gripped with the COVID pandemic. And, and God spoke to me that things would happen in July. And look at that, Phuket is making a new start in July. The borders are open after 15 months. Right. Tourists are coming. I saw the airport busting the day for the first time in months. And it was full. Praise God. Tourists are coming back. Things are starting to happen. Right, and God is blessing like no, 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 come before for the first time in 55 years. You're going to run a final. Come on. During lockdown, we've learned something powerful. We've learned about the ecclesia in the home. But now it's time to take the ecclesia in the home up the mountain to hear from God, to be the ecclesia in the community. The ecclesia in the home was designed to change the community, not just the home. That's so powerful. Because instead of having church in one location, we have church in many locations. And we have the opportunity now to take what we have learned into the community more powerfully than we've ever done before. When I go to the high place and I look over Phuket, I see ecclesias in schools. I'm seeing ecclesias in offices. I'm seeing ecclesias in coffee shops. I'm seeing ecclesias in the hotels. In the streets. Up the beaches. And we start at the mountain top. New beginning speaks to me of new life. And, and many of us are pregnant with vision as to what God wants to do with us. We're discovering that God has great plans for us. He wants to bring us, he wants, he wants to make us the channels of hope. He wants us to tell people, look, you have a future. Phuket has a future. Phuket has hope. Right? And we source that goal to the people. When a woman gives birth nowadays, and of course I'm, re I'm getting this from books on the internet, I, uh, I have not ever been birth myself. So I might get some replies on the online or whatever. This is just hearsay. Right? But from what I gather, women are taught about how to breathe during childbirth, before childbirth and during childbirth. 
mind, time, and thought, Matt. And it's a very important thing to learn and to breathe properly when you give your birth. First of all, you're maximizing oxygen and you're dealing with stress. And a lot of proper breathing doesn't take the pain away, it helps to lessen the pain. Now, I, I, I am told that uh, I felt some pain once when I had a back spasm, and that was pretty bad. And I remember being in hospital and the nurse said to me, Now you know what it feels like to give birth. <laughs> uh, because I tell you that I would not, I do not wish that kind of pain on anybody. Right when when your spinal column is trapped between two bones. That is really bad pain. And uh, I, I, I don't want to go back there again, hallelujah. Right? So breathing apparently lessens the pain of childbirth. I can see one or two mothers looking at me like, sure. <laughs> Uh, and the most common, but it also, actually, I didn't know this, but it actually helps you uh, because one of the most common problems in being childbirth is breaking bones. And breathing properly helps you to stretch the bones so that we don't break them. Now this guy is called Lamas, Dr. Fernand Lamas. And he came up with a, a breathing techniques in childbirth. Again, he's a bloke. What do you know about childbirth? <laughs> But apparently he observed how uh, Russian women were giving childbirth in communist Russia. Because there were no hospitals and no medication. <laughs> and he saw that all of them were being taught how to do this breathing and so he came up with the Lamar's method of breathing. Now that speaks to me about the spiritual importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit so that what we birth is by the power of the Holy Spirit, not in our own strength. That which we birth by the power of the Holy Spirit will not only remain, but it will also multiply. That which we build will be corrupted and will die. Now, what so it's not just enough to get revelation from God. Right? We need to maintain our spiritual connectivity with God throughout the whole process, throughout the whole birthing process. I have to be connected with God all through what is happening. 
But all of a sudden, as the guy's running, he's heading his back and he can't even see where he's going. And he's breathing in the Holy Spirit, he's worshipping God. Right, this is like somebody's giving him an injection of energy. And he, and he just runs past the wall. But you look at his style of running and he's just, uh, his head's right back in. You see him breathing in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to me, it's just incredible because on the track you have to go around corners and he's not looking. But he's going around and he just goes past everybody and wins the gold medal. And, okay, that's few and far between that kind of thing happens. But it's the perfect example of combining the sports science of breathing and the spiritual message of being filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, if you're going to run the race and you're going to finish well and you're going to win the prize, breathing is the key. Whether it's in the Olympics or spiritually, whether it's in the kingdom of God, if you're going to finish strong for God, you've got to be filled with the Spirit. So as we bring this series about the importance of breathing to an end, you can't just come and say, oh, that was great teaching. But I'm being presumptuous, you might not think it's great teaching, but if you do, praise the Lord, you can't just stop there. Yeah, you can. Because it has to become a lifestyle. Spiritual breathing has to be essential to run a race that wins the prize. The constant indwelling of the Holy Spirit which assures us of living with the manifest presence of Jesus at all times. Even, even when you're asleep. Sometimes in the past I've woken up and feeling, feeling sick. And I know that it's not a normal sickness. I know it's a spiritual attack. And I just rebuke the attack. And I normally say something like, Greater is he that is in me than he that is attacking me. So back off, I want to go to sleep. And I feel better. Right? Why? Because the manifest presence of Jesus is in me. Right? I go back to sleep and I have a good night's sleep. God's power and authority are with us all the time. And in every situation, because the Holy Spirit is there, I get guidance. Right? I'm always asking God, what should I do, Lord?
Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that is the people who died and gone to be with Jesus before us, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith.